Wying Windu Power Facility is located in West Java in probably one of the most beautiful parts of West Java. It's a magnificent area. The plant itself is situated at about 1,700 metres above sea level. It's also uh, a very important area in West Java for, for example, vegetable growing. Extremely important area for dairy. It's one of the most important tea growing areas of West Java. Uh, but it's also very scenic, so it's important that developers, any sort of industrial developers there, have a great deal of respect for the environment because the potential in the future for uh, tourism, for example, may be situated around geothermal and development of spas and so on, is, is huge. Uh, but that won't happen unless the pristine environment is reasonably well preserved. My company believes that there's about 27 or 28, possibly 30 gigawatts of, of electricity potential just in geothermal. Uh, that's about, that's more than half of the geothermal potential of the globe, and that's just in Indonesia. It's an enormous competitive advantage that Indonesia should be taking advantage of. Wying Windu geothermal plant was developed in the late 90s, actually. It's been producing electricity now for more than 10 years. Initially it was just one turbine. When it was installed it was the biggest turbine in the world, 110 megawatts. A second turbine was put in place, it came on stream in 2009, and that was an additional 117 megawatts. So the plant now is producing just under 230 megawatts of base load electricity that goes into the West Java grid, sold to PLN at the site. We're developing another um, unit at the moment, a third unit, which will produce around 130 megawatts of power, taking the total capacity there to about um, 360 megawatts. We're still in the process of proving up how much steam there is there. It's probably the best steam field ever found in the world so far, but what its ultimate potential is we don't really know. It may be 400 megawatts, it may be 600 megawatts, it may be more than that. So we're in the process of, of just proving what the ultimate capacity can be. But whatever it is, it's, it's extremely important in the national interest and extremely important to baseload power production in West Java because it's so reliable. Geothermal actually, this is the, just a simple process uh, to generate electricity. The steam is already there in the earth. We hit the reservoir uh, with the drilling process. The drilling process is around uh, 30 days, and then uh, set up everything. The well now is ready for uh, delivering the steam. Transferring steam, uh, starting from the well going to the power station, this is by gravity. There is no additional equipment that we use. So we can say actually the geothermal process is very, very friendly. The aluminum cladding is uh, used for maintaining the temperature. So entering the, the power station, we still have enough energy to rotate the turbine. We use a separator and our process is to separate between steam and water. Steam will be going to the power station and then water will be going to the injection well to maintain the reservoir. The scrapper is to uh, take away the, any impurities before going to the turbine. Particularly in Indonesia, drilling holes is very expensive business. And so the initial investment into a plant is very high and the risks are high because it's, in a way, the, it's developing a steam field in much the way that you need to develop an oil and gas uh, field. But the returns for oil and gas are much higher. The returns for geothermal electricity are typically utility rates of return because it's a utility business. So you're risking very high amounts of capital for a highly regulated, reliable, but low margin return. It's, a, it's not an easy sell 
for, for a board of directors, uh, for, for a set of investors or for a financier. Wying Windu is exceptional and there are one or two other plants in Indonesia that also fit this bill because it's proven that without any government subsidies or any support of any kind, it can actually be a viable, good, high return business. We planted 300,000 coffee trees in the area so that the, the local, and handed those to the local people. So they now have a thriving business. But we've put a very strong emphasis on building capacity. So educating people, providing them with, with, the, with the knowledge and the wherewithal that they need to actually run the infrastructure once it's been built, to maintain the road, to run the clinic and administer um, good health to the local community, to teach in the, in the local school. Those, for us, uh, that, that, that's uh, just as important, if not more important, as, as actually building kit. The big challenges with geothermal are, firstly, that, that it's, uh, it's captive indigenous energy. You can't use geothermal for much else. It's very expensive to find it and prove it. It doesn't have to face the same uh, sort of development issues that other forms of, for example, thermal electricity generation face. You can't export geothermal, you can't use it for much else, the steam and the hot water for much else in this country other than electricity generation. And it's very expensive to do all that. At the other end of the equation, then you have to sell it once you've been through all that process, taken all the risks, spent all the money to prove the upstream resource and then developed a power plant. You've got to sell the electricity to a monopoly government utility. Uh, now, that presents interesting problems in itself. The monopoly government utility, in my experience, is an extremely good customer. But trying to convince a bank of that, for example, when you need to go out and finance a project is not a simple matter. The contracts are long-term, the long-term effectively power purchase agreements between us and, and PLN. And PLN, to be frank, PLN needs all the, the, the power it can get, particularly baseload power. So it's happy for us to develop electricity as much as we can. Of course, they want to buy that electricity at as low a price as possible because they're also heavily regulated at both ends of their activities. So they need a relatively low price. So the negotiations are robust, but that's, for me, that's a healthy situation as long as the outcomes are achievable. And in Indonesia, they are achievable. It's a hell of a lot easier to expand an existing project when you know that the science works and you know that the business works. Much, much easier to expand an existing project than to start from scratch in a whole new area, a whole new volcano, conditions that you know nothing about. So I think there is a strong emphasis on companies like Star expanding their projects as much as they can. The issue is that even with expansion of existing projects, we run up against lack of coordination in different bits of government because we still need approval from local authorities and we still need approval from provincial authorities and approval from the approvals from the centre. And of course we need to negotiate price for incremental electricity with PLN. All that needs to come together to allow the projects to happen. We're looking to build the proportion of electricity that's generated in this country by geothermal because we believe that's in the national interest. We believe it's in the interest of all the communities that will host those developments. And we believe it's extremely important for the future economic growth of the country that we do that. And we're going to do it, absolutely.